Chapter 9.7, Probability and Sample Space. When we talk about probabilities, we're simply working out the chance that something's going to happen. We often refer to a theoretical probability, which is how we calculate mathematically the probability or the possibility that something's going to occur. Now this can be a simple example like um, the probability that we're going to throw a head or a coin, a head or a tail on a coin, or it could be um, the probability that we're going to roll a three when we roll a dice. Or it could be something far more complicated than that, such as the probability that you're going to live to a certain age, the probability that you're going to have a car accident, the probability that you're going to contract a disease, the probability that you're going to win the lottery. And these sorts of probabilities are all ones that um, mathematicians work out because there's lots of money uh, behind working out a lot of these things. Even something like uh, when you get insurance uh, to insure your car or your house or anything like that, your, your contents, those are basically probabilities that those companies have worked out and then they calculate the premium that you pay to have that insurance based on those probabilities. And it's all based in this sort of mass that we're looking at here. So, theoretical probability. Probability, it's always going to be a fraction and it's between 0 and 1. And by fraction it could be a decimal fraction or a, a normal fraction. Sometimes we can write fractions as percentages, so we could have it as a percentage as well. And I've written here that the probability that we work out it's going to be more than zero, so greater than or equal to zero, and less than or equal to one. So the probability could be one, it could be zero, or anywhere in the middle. If there's something that's got no chance of happening, we say it has a probability of zero, or zero percent. Um, often we refer to that as an impossible event, or having Buckley's chance, it means you've got no chance at all. If something is certain to occur, we say it has a probability of 1 or 100%. Uh, such as the probability that the sun's going to come up tomorrow morning is a probability of 1. And something that's got a 50-50 chance means you've got half a chance of it happening. So a half or 0.5 or 50%. And that's how people refer to a 50-50 chance of something. Now when we work out the probability, we talk about the probability of an event. Now, we, si we simplify that to this down here. P stands for probability. We have a set of brackets, and inside the brackets goes whatever we're looking at. And th at the moment, I'm calling it E for an event. And we'll see with our example, we will write something in there for what we're actually looking at uh, calculating. So it could be probability of winning the Powerball lottery, lottery or Tats Lotto, or anything like that. Now, we work it out by this little equation over here. The number of favourable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. The total number of outcomes is basically the total number of possible results. If I'm flipping a coin, it's a head or a tail. If I'm rolling a dice, it's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and so on. The number of favourable outcomes is the ones that I'm looking for. How many of these ones here that I've written are possible divided by the total number of possible outcomes? We'll come and look at that in our worked example. Sample space. Sample space is simply a complete list of all possible outcomes. So I just said the coin example, heads and tails are our only possibility, and I've written it in these little uh, funny squiggly brackets, because that's one way of, of, of writing what your sample space is, and everything within those brackets is what's possible. Flipping a coin, it's head or tail. Dice, one, two, three, four, five, or six. Uh, if we had the probability of winning Tats Lotto and we listed all the possible entries, there would be millions and millions and millions of them. Okay, let's have a look at worked example 16. So the question says, find the probability of A, rolling an odd number with a normal die, and B, selecting a vowel, which is A, E, I, O, or U, from a bag containing 26 identical pieces of paper, each containing a different letter of the alphabet. And I'll sum summarise that there. So let's look at part A first. So, probability of rolling an odd with a die. So, A. Now, if you want, you can list out the sample space.
And what are my possibilities on, on a normal die? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. The question doesn't necessarily ask you to do that, so it's not completely necessary to do that. But here's what we have to have. Now, within my sample space, what are my favourable outcomes? They're the ones I'm looking for. Now I'm looking for an odd number. So that's him, him, and him. They're my favourable outcomes. If I roll a one, a three, or a five, I've got an odd number. I don't want the rest of them. So here's how we do it. So the probability of an odd, so just summarise it like that with something simple, equals number of favourable outcomes. So the number of ones that I want, one, two, and th three, so those three there, so there's three favourable outcomes, divided by the total number of outcomes, there's six possibilities, three over six. And we simplify that fraction to a half. And we're done. All right, part B. What we're looking for here is uh, pulling a vowel out of a bag containing all the letters of the alphabet. So you can write out the sample space if you like. The sample space is the entire alphabet, A, B, C, D, all the way through to Z. And there's 26 of those. The favourable outcomes are the ones we want, which is just the vowels, which is just A, E, I, O and U, five. So, so the probability of a vowel equals number of favourable outcomes, that was just five, divided by how many letters are in the alphabet? 26. Five over 26. Can't be simplified, so that's my final answer. And that's all we need to write. We need to write out probability of something in brackets, what we're looking for, equals, and then our answer there. And if we can simplify it, we do it like we did just there.